Welcome back for this second hour. As you can see behind me, we're all talking about money matters. This week is very important. One for the finance bill 2024. And on Thursday, we do anticipate the National Treasury Cabinet Secretary, that is Professor Njugunandugo, will be heading over to Parliament to present our very highest budget we've ever prepared in our country. That is a 4.006 trillion uh, budget that he'll present before Parliament and, of course, has been divided accordingly by the Budget Committee led by Kiharu, Member of Parliament. Didi Nyoro. That is our conversation. We'll be focusing on, talk to us on our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1 and at Abdiaziz Hashim 1. Taking us through this conversation, we do have a host of experts and analysts as well as experts from the field themselves. I want to understand from James Chuanya, the tax manager from PKF. Have you been had a chance to present uh, your cases before the finance bill? Yes, we did. Uh, we had the opportunity to present our submissions to the uh, Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning Okay. Uh, last week, but one. Okay. And uh, I think as of yesterday, they formally closed that process. Okay, James. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you for confirming that so that the viewers could know as well. Uh, we also have here Oscar Mondi, political analyst, Oscar Karibu Tena. Yes, and then Philip Pande, a youth, a youth inclusion advisor as well as an economist major. Thank you for coming in as well. Thank you very much, uh, Abdi, and a good morning to our viewers. And finally, we do have a professor, or rather a doctor, Benjamin Koske, governance expert, also a man who wears very hats, various hats, that is, he's also a lecturer from Kenyatta University. Thank you for making us uh, time for us uh, this morning. Let me start with you, James, going back to you. Um, yesterday you had a briefing, you had clearly stated the positions of PKF uh, in terms of the taxation measures the government has uh, proposed, especially from the National Treasury. Um, would you say some of the recommendations you had made before the committee could be considered? Uh, I think as we rightly pointed out yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. that, was, that is part of a public participation process which is enshrined in law. Yes. And uh, the, the committee has uh, the power to listen to uh, the various submissions that are made. Mm -hmm. They will retreat back and look through the recommendations and probably bring su sufficient changes that they can introduce to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. So yes, I have faith that uh, some of the submissions that we made, mm -hmm. uh, both before the committee and uh, through the press briefing, will be looked into. Uh, the most contentious ones, we hope, can be dropped. Mm -hmm. And for the positive ones, we hope those will be retained. Mm -hmm. yep. We'll be coming to us. You explain to us what are those uh, benefits that you have been able to be accorded that will be beneficial to the economy and what are those that are hurting the economy. Um, let me go to Daktari. Daktari, you have had, uh, you have seen uh, from various organizations, from members of the public, uh, before the finance committee, even outside the finance committee, you as a, not just a lecturer, but a doctor in this particular field, what are your thoughts on the public participation exercise, especially on the finance bill itself? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Abdi. Um, for uh, public participation, I think it is a, a very crucial uh, 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 segment in terms of um, uh, uh, making the finance uh, 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 bill. Mm -hmm. But I want to believe that uh, they may not necessarily uh, take in all the proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that uh, in this country, you, you, you may make a lot of proposals, but when they retreat to, to write the final uh, yes. uh, report, they may not make a lot of changes maybe five percent maybe but uh, many players came up with good proposals mm -hmm. and um, and and amendment like uh, for example you, you see w w when they are when they are coming up with these uh, uh, budget whatever mm -hmm. they are informed by 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 many things yes. number one the global the global level uh, that is IMF, the players, uh, the UN. Number two is the interest. Mm -hmm. The politicians have their interest. Mm -hmm. Number three is the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number four is maybe decided cases. The KRA losing a case mm -hmm. in course, they go back and uh, make oh. some amendment and, uh, and, and raise taxes. And maybe the last one is policy. Okay. Mm -hmm. the policy the national policy act okay. so public participation is very important okay, Dr. but for me mm -hmm. they may not take in all the proposals mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um, Philip 
uh, this is not just the first time. In 2023, we were in the same scenario. Um, how do you gauge this time around, especially from the finance bill, especially from this po uh, political class? Last year, we saw how uh, emotive it was. This time around, we've seen the political uh, class quiet about it. Um, Abdi, it's uh, quite an interesting time, especially mm -hmm. on the aspect of public awareness and public participation in matters governance um, and public finance in this country, which I think is um, a really good step towards uh, improving our democracy as, as a country. Initially, you are quite aware that uh, the public was not very focused on the finance bill and sometimes would just you know, listen to the budget uh, uh, policy statement or the budget uh, appropriation bill itself discussed or read in parliament by the minister in charge of the national treasury without much fuss and without much detail. Mm -hmm. But I think in the advent of the new constitution uh, and lately uh, more awareness on public participation and more awareness on circulation of document, especially in the uh, quest for e-governance, uh, mm -hmm documents such as the finance bill fly around and it's available on our phones and so it's possible to know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. uh, significantly, uh, as we talk about the improvement of, of democracy and governance, um, the most important thing certainly is the mm -hmm. voices of the people. Uh, is, is the finance bill working for the people or working yes. against the people? Mm -hmm. and, and the people in, in totality uh, should be the government because the government is the voice and the representation of the people. So mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, the public, there is um, a, a, a wide public outcry that uh, it's not working for us, then certainly it's not working for government. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in all aspects, um, it is for the government and, and people advising government to find out what could work for government, what could work for the public, and what could work for the nation. And mm -hmm. um, I'm just taking key on what uh, Dr. is alluding to, that uh, you know, it's guided by the IMF, guided by the UN and so forth. Sometimes uh, budgets, and especially our policy uh, formulation and, and policy documents, must be guided by the local context before the uh, international frameworks before other external forces. Of course, we exist within the global spectrum where we relate to other nations, we uh, borrow and live from other democracies. But again, as policy formulators and policy proponents, mm -hmm. we say that, uh, you know, cut and paste in policy formulation does not work for economists, does not work for democracies. So it has to be an original a document that reflects the realities on the ground, the realities uh, of, of the people. A prof uh, or doc here will tell you that one thing that they they punish in, in the academia is uh, plagiarism. Yes. And plagiarism means that you're taking somebody else's work and, and claiming to be your own. So our uh, finance bill, our budget, must be original to the context and to the realities of the people of Kenya. Okay. Omondi, now you have the chair of the bite. Tell us, um, what piqued your interest especially, given that you had talked about this uh, initially weeks ago when we were talking about the finance bill, uh, when the exercise was about to start. Now the exercise has concluded. What piqued your interest? And also, given that you're an, a political analyst, how do you gauge the mood of these politicians as we head over to Parliament? Uh, thank you very much again, Abdi. Uh, I, I take a different uh, uh, trajectory on how some of these things are happening or are panning down now mm -hmm. at the moment. Something to do with uh, what Dr. Ari calls about the, 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 the public participation. This is the only time as a political scientist, as a political in, in politics discipline, mm -hmm. for, uh, the only time that we are having Kenyans really, really participating in economic issues. Mm -hmm. As much as that parliament and parliamentarians might not be able to implement what people say or, or whatever the outcomes of the public participation exercise, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter for me. What matters for me so much is that now Kenyans are so much interested mm -hmm. on how their monies are being spent. So whether they implement those things, that's a different question. But the fact that a lot of people are coming out to participate in public participation exercise, mm -hmm. that's a very good thing, a very good sign of very many things that are coming. The, the same thing uh, uh, will be, if, if it is reflected also in the counties, 
that the Mwananchi down there get to participate in governance. Mm -hmm. Governance as in they get to understand and discuss the budgets of the counties too. Okay. The same same way the national level and other processes. We expect to see other processes like the budgeting committee. The budgeting committee has not done very good, <coughs> according to me, very good public participation exercise. Mm -hmm. That's why people still don't understand what is happening in the budgeting process. Mm -hmm. But you see the finance committee led by the Molo MP yeah. has uh, done at least a robust thing in terms of this thing to do with the financial, uh, the, the, the finance act of 2024 and 2023. Mm -hmm. You know, a long time ago, finance acts are done every year, but you never n used to hear a lot of agitation about that particular act, mm -hmm. as opposed to the way it has been for the last two years. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure even the finance bill 2025, we will see a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, stuff going on and people discussing and public participation. Mm -hmm. And public participation doesn't have to be, according to me, going, in, going to sit with the Molo MP at parliament buildings. Mm -hmm. Even at, others, at other avenues, at other forums, people sit. People who are sitting at, my, at, at Boda Boda discussing about the finance bill, this, the Monjiko sitting down there, Mamboka sitting down there, what are they discussing? They're discussing the finance bill. Mm -hmm. That means that people are so much interested on how they're governed, how their money is being used, how they're taxed, and how, what, what, uh, the revenue expenditure, how it will be spent by the people in government and people in authority. Okay. I think as a political scientist, it's mm -hmm. a good thing. Mm -hmm. whether, they, whether it's implemented or not, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. But the fact that people are so much concerned. And this one, the public opinion, the opinions that are brought out of this, you know, we only use, we can only measure the voter behavior after every five years. We measure the voter behavior. But public opinion is measured every time during the process. And you can see other public opinion survey organizations like InfoTax, they also bring and question people on how people think about the taxation regime that is going on and how, what are people discussing. Mm -hmm. To the last person, at least now, even the people who, not, who are not in, in universities or in, 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 in institutes like where my brother works, are able to sit down and discuss the finance bill. I think it's a, it's a good thing, and the constitution that we put in place, which was a participatory <coughs> constitution, mm -hmm. is taking shape and taking shape very well. Mm -hmm. And as we continue with this conversation, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the finance bill of 2024. Uh, public participation concluded yesterday, but we have been informed that in the afternoon there will be a session that will be led by the Molo Member of Parliament, where they'll be meeting various ministries, especially the Treasury, given that they led with these proposals. The taxman, which is the Kenya Revenue Authority, Attorney General, Environment, Trade and Transport Ministries in the afternoon to talk about some of the proposed tax levies. Like, for example, the environment, when you talk about eco levy, transport, we have the motor vehicle tax uh, placed at 2.5%. Why is that the case? We'll get to understand from the various cabinet secretaries who will be appearing before that particular committee or the principal secretaries. If they will fail to show up, they will send their principal secretaries while they are counting officers of the various ministries but as we continue with this conversation let's get to hear from the members of the public what they are saying about this finance bill 2024 we had taken a little bit of vox pops in terms of this particular bill and how it will impact not just their businesses but their day-to-day -day operations so let's get to hear from them mina nasi ma mp tafadali musipitisha yo kitu junajua kitu itaingia hapo kwenye musipitisha maisha ni magumu Ikipita hapo mkipitisha sasa watu sisi kama sisi raia tutaumia sana kuliko vile tunaumia saa hii. Hata hii matuzo ya ushuru hatutaki. Ushuru ilikuwa zamani lakini ilikuwa to pesilingi pana kama saa hii. Saa hii hata nyumba ushuru. Nini ukishika kitu ushuru? Ukifanya biashara ushuru, kuku ushuru tunateseka sana. Kama hii mambo ya ya hii nini? Finance ya finance bill kupitishwa. Mimi kwangu naona wasipitishe kwa maana maisha ni ngumu. Sasa wakipitisha yu tunaenda kuzama. Kama tayari tumezama, sasa wakipitisha je, mina amba tuwe MP stafadhali. Sisi njyo tunapitisha nga nyingi. Kura mnapata kwa sisi. Tafadhali musipitishe, tutaumia vibaya. Il, eh, wabunge bwana misio nele mpitishe ikitu. Ya the previous year ilikuwa noma, vijana wano umeo kuinja wana makazi. Nge kwa at least mna shugulikia na vituka hizo, mtu wakiwa na maliana atawakitu itakuwa beta. Lakini saa, angalia watu wawana kazi, 
bado mnataka kuongeza taxes so ni nini unanyonga hapo already unaumiza mtu mwenye muumia na kitu ya kutoa it is moved from taxes and therefore that means that the prices of those essential commodities will go much higher and Kenyans are really going to face the wrath of a very difficult economy going forward those are the sentiments of Kenyans as well as members of a parliament. It is a crucial week. Let me start with a James. A James, you've heard from the members of the public yesterday. You had a briefing, and I can see even, I even have your presentation here that you presented yesterday uh, in that particular press briefing. You're talking about the punitive motor vehicle tax. What are these other issues that you have signaled, and what are your proposals going forward? I think I want to uh, thank you very much, Abdi. Mm -hmm. I want to pick up from where my colleague uh, uh, stopped. Mm -hmm in the issue of uh, uh, tax policy. Mm -hmm. I think we have to also give it to the credit to the government in terms of uh, their legislation going forward and their intention going forward. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've had an issue or a discussion around the national tax policy, mm -hmm. which has never really come to, uh, uh, into play. Uh, we've had drafts, we've had the policy uh, presented to the National Assembly, mm -hmm. but it, has, uh, it was only until uh, uh, last month where we formally had uh, 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 the national tax policy that has been <coughs> passed and that has been adopted. It is our request that even going forward, in as much as that national tax policy has already been passed, it should therefore be implemented so that it doesn't just become another policy that uh, uh, sits on the shelves. Now, if you see uh, uh, the reason we advocate for uh, national tax policy is because of the changes that come with the legislation. Been proposed in the national tax policy is uh, the issue on uh, a review of legislation. Yes. Now, uh, as my colleagues rightly point out, we normally have the finance bill uh, on a year-to-year -year basis. Yes. But it was only up until last year when we uh, we got so much uh, uh, debate around it because of the introduction of the affordable housing levy. Mm -hmm. But it, this is a process that takes place on a year-to-year -year basis. Now, if you go to uh, investors, and investors will want to invest in the country because we are actually attracting investors uh, uh, in the manufacturing industry and across, all, uh, across different sectors, how then would they be able to uh, uh, put the kind of investment they'd want to put in the country uh, if the nature of our tax industry, if the nature of our tax keeps changing on a year-to-year -year basis? Uh, and, and therefore, what the policy is recommending for is a stability mm -hmm. in terms of taxes going forward and a, a, a level or a time frame under which the taxes cannot uh, just have to change on a year-to-year -year basis. If you look, for example, uh, the finance uh, bill proposals that we have this year, some of those proposals actually intend to revise the very changes they brought in last year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and the ones they're bringing in this year are changes that we've seen the government attempt to bring in on a year-to-year -year basis. Mm -hmm. So what the policy then is going to do, and is a very good thing when implemented, is that it will give investors and even the general public uh, some bit of stability in terms of uh, uh, the taxes uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. Now in terms of uh, 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 another measure that I would say the government has actually done better is even for the employees themselves. We've always had uh, some bit of benefits that are given, the non-taxable benefits given to employees. Uh, uh, we are aware of the non-cash benefits given to employees of uh, up to 3,000 that is not taxable on a month-to-month -month basis. Uh, the bill has proposed to increase that limit uh, from what it currently is of uh, uh, 36,000 to 48,000. Meal benefits given to staff, there's also a proposed increment on that kind of threshold. Uh, for majority of uh, uh, the public who trade, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, who, who trade or sell various items, uh, there is a VAT that is applicable to everyone. The threshold for VAT registration is currently at 5 million. Mm -hmm. uh, it therefore means that majority of the taxpayers, once you hit the 5 million threshold, then it becomes mandatory to register for VAT, even with the advent of uh, teams that has come into force. Yes. What the government has proposed to do is to increase that threshold from 5 million to uh, 8 million. Uh, it's not very uh, ideal uh, to leave it at 8 million, mm -hmm. though it's a welcome move, but we actually uh, uh, would have even hoped that the amount can go up a little long, a, a, little, a little higher, 
to about 15 or even 20 million, but it is a step in the right direction. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, in as much as uh, there are those positive steps, mm -hmm. there are also the negative impact that the finance bill is also uh, seeking to to have on the uh, on the on on the economy mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the general public in itself. Uh, the negative effect is the one that most people have talked about: the motor vehicle circulation yes. tax. And you look at the manner in which uh, it is intended to to be taxed. Uh, I think if you remember back, Abdi, uh, about uh, uh, two, three years ago, uh, we had uh, uh, the proposed uh, introduction of the minimum tax, mm -hmm. and which the courts at some point uh, had to stop, and uh, which is currently not in force. Mm -hmm. And what the mi minimum tax was attempting to do is to tax, uh, 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 impose a tax on revenue as mm -hmm. it is, rather than uh, the net gain. Uh, what uh, the motor vehicle tax is attempting to do is to introduce a property tax in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, our view is that that is against uh, the provisions of Section 3 mm -hmm. of the Income Tax Act because in, in the very sense uh, what then you'll be taxing is you're not taxing the income or the gain that comes from it but rather the motor vehicle circulation tax itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, and, uh, and coming in with the motor vehicle circulation tax, you see mm -hmm. the net effect is uh, the common one uh, who was talking because uh, you look at uh, the manner in which uh, the tax is meant to be introduced. You are introducing a tax of 2.5% on the value of the motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now, there are, many, there are many factors that we'll have to look at if we have to value that motor vehicle. But to what extent is the motor vehicle uh, uh, in use because we have commercial vehicles. Uh, we've not seen an exemption on uh, school, uh, school buses themselves. And, and the effect of an increase in the motor vehicle tax or even on school buses, it means that the level of or the school fees will have to go up because uh, that has an effect. It also has an effect on public transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it equally uh, has, a, has a serious effect on the companies that are, or, or the entities that are not exempted because what the government has done mm -hmm. is it has introduced exemptions for the very government agencies that they have but left the rest of the Kenyans uh, out of it. Okay. Besides uh, the motor vehicle uh, uh, taxes, uh, I think I've seen the Member of Parliament talk about uh, the reclassification of items from uh, exempt or from zero rating to exempt. Yes. And you look at the items in which the government has attempted to uh, reclassify. Uh, now, one of those items is uh, affect the tourism industry. Uh, the construction or the materials that are in use for the construction in that for the for the tourism for the recreational parks and and, and that is an item that has attempted to or be always been moved by the government from time to time okay james we're coming from covid 19 mm -hmm. and uh, the effect of covid 19 we know that the impact that it has on the general economy okay uh, ordinary bread mm -hmm. for example why you do tax ordinary bread uh, if it's currently zero rated why would you uh, uh, introduce a tax on it on 16%? Because okay. it's no longer just uh, uh, any other uh, uh, luxury uh, luxury mm -hmm. item. Mm -hmm. So the changes are there. Uh, our net if, the net effect is that uh, uh, the changes that were introduced last year mm -hmm. and the ones that are being introduced last year tend to have uh, some bit of a, pun a punitive aspect in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, the changes are about close to uh, 60 uh, on the finance bill themselves, okay. and um, maybe perhaps if you give me more time, then okay. I'll be able to. I will give you half that time. Yeah. Let me head over to Philip. While you respond to, you've just had sentiments from Kenyans there, but the element of James is talking about. It's not only PKF that has talked about. Every Kenyan or every organisation that has come before the finance committee have been decrying. Why don't we make this finance bill predictable for businesses so as to attract investors and boost their businesses within our country? Given that the government currently is focusing on manufacturing. Uh, some of the manufacturers in the country are saying that this will inhibit them from starting up those industries that are within their confines and take them elsewhere in other countries like Uganda or Tanzania and then send those goods and services to us <coughs> duty-free. Well, um, Abdi, the argument here as an economist would be uh, government has always um, an opportunity to evaluate the net effect of any policy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the fact here being um, the discussion around the finance bill uh, that would be guiding our collections for at least the next one fiscal year. What is, what is, what is the overall rationale? Is it 
regressive? Is it proportional? Is it progressive mm -hmm. on the on the place of, of Mwananchi? And I, I think um, the denominator here is that, like you say, everybody appearing before uh, the finance committee mm -hmm. is saying the same thing. Of course, people would want a reprieve. People would be in a, a happy in a nation, not mm -hmm. paying taxes at all. Yes. Uh, but like uh, the Bible says, you give what belongs to Caesar to, to Caesar. We run the government, we run the economy based on contributions of uh, one inch and, and businesses and partners. We're looking today at a budget of uh, just shy of four, four trillion. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at least, uh, uh, with a huge deficit still. We are looking at revenues of about 3.3 .3 trillion against 3.9 trillion budget. Mm -hmm. and, and you're looking at, uh, um, you know, 10% of our revenue still coming from appropriation in aid. If, if we get that kind of support, what reprieves are we, are we having? But uh, uh, like James says, sector-wise, who is affected? Um, we were talking about last year it was more of, uh, of, of the uh, employed Kenyan that was going to chuck out more in terms of the housing levy, mm -hmm. which was more controversial. Today we're talking about something like the eco levy that touches the household in, in many ways. I'll give you two, uh, I, I'll demonstrate two aspects. One is on, uh, on diapers, and we've talked largely about this. Yes. Um, today in Nairobi, out of every 100 shillings, uh, at least 40 shillings goes to food in, in household consumption. But what is the cost of one diaper? Mm -hmm. uh, it's about 50 shillings or more, uh, the average cost of, of many other products that are, I mean, brands that are in, available in the market. A little tinkering in terms of uh, taxation on that product alone raises household expenditure on non-food items, mm -hmm. which means the capacity of the houses to even save a little income to uh, work on, on different aspects of their livelihoods becomes difficult. Uh, mobile phone. Today we have uh, uh, the phones that are paid on pay-as-you-go, uh, like, you know, people pay for motor vehicle. Today it's the mobile phone that many households and, and many people today um, are paying a daily fee or a weekly fee or a monthly fee to own their mobile phones. Mm -hmm. If we introduce the eco levy, which also touches on the prices of, of my mobile phones, then it means you shifting that ability to pay on a daily basis because the income levels will still be the same. You shifting the ability to pay, uh, and what we call in economics the can afford line is getting higher and higher. Uh, if you could hold it last year, then it would be further drifting away from you. How then are we able to deal with these dynamics without affecting individual consumptions? It means, therefore, that if I can't do without the phone, then I have to, I have to go down, I mean, go slow on food. If I can't afford diapers, then uh, probably I'll need to get a makeshift or probably go back to what they used on some of us those yeah, days. Okay. <laughs> but all in all, what we are saying is uh, the essence of, of, um, of the bill and the essence of, of taxation mm -hmm. is to help us get to some level of uh, sufficiency or internal dependence, but to also make it possible for the citizens to afford what they need to afford, okay. but again give to what needs to go to the government. Okay. Uh, I'll combine this, Abdi, with what you asked me about the political class and their, um, their sense of the finance bill this year and so forth. Mm -hmm. I think this year you see more of uh, opposition on, on the finance bill coming from the government within government itself, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, where uh, the presidency is split, you know, How so? right? We cannot prove that. Is it split? <laughs> so, no, no, uh, we so what we're saying, you, you've seen senses of... Uh, yes, we can't prove yeah, that. One person yes. trying to say that we are going to oppose this. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a contrast of last year when it was the opposition, you know, leading the... The, the, the hunt against the finance bill. Which they still are, under yes. Calonzo. Um, mm. Under Calonzo, but the shift, uh, I'm saying that the, the pivot has shifted from you know, the external forces to the internal forces. Mm. So are we agreeing holistically that the, the, the finance bill, as, as proposed today, 
is good for government and it's mm -hmm. good for the citizen. Okay. Like I said, if it's good for the citizen, it's good for government. If it's mm -hmm. bad for the citizens, it's hurting government. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me play a devil's advocate here, Daktari. Um, even the finance chair asked this particular question to everybody who was coming before uh, its committee. If we are not willing as Kenyans to pay these taxes, given that the current government and the various administrations that we are under in, they are trying to create this self-reliance within our borders so that we don't have to go keep on borrowing from w the World Bank and other international organizations like the IMF as well. So if we do not pay our taxes, then who will? Um, thank you, Abdi, for that uh, question. Um, the MP for Molo, uh, Kimani Korea, mm -hmm. asked that question. I think it was a, a rhetoric question mm. because we have been surviving. We have been paying tax, but what Kenyans are saying, you are now introducing uh, uh, punitive taxes, mm -hmm. like these uh, uh, motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. But not everybody who has a car. If but it is exempted, because some of the suggestions that are being made, if we exempt it from the commercial vehicles, yeah. which are the PSVs and these vehicles that uh, farmers operate from, mm -hmm. and we keep it as a private one. Uh, yeah. I'm not attacking people who have cars, but we keep it for the people who possess those cars. Yeah. Is it not fair? It is not fair, mm -hmm. because it have a, a, a spiral effect, you see. Let me give you an example, mm -hmm. uh, Abdi. Uh, as a lecturer, I go for a loan and buy a car. Mm -hmm. And when I buy that car, I pay tax mm -hmm. in Mombasa. Okay? I fuel that car. Mm -hmm. The fuel has some, some levies. Yes, VAT. Okay? VAT, yeah. Remember, I went for a, a bank loan. And then I go back to the university. The bank loan is deducted. Mm -hmm. NSSF is deducted, tire one and tire two. Mm -hmm. NHIF, now SHIF, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay? The housing levy, mm -hmm. okay? Abdi, can I continue? Yes, you can, uh -huh. because they are there. Uh, mm -hmm. Retirement pension scheme, Yes. okay? Are you seeing? Mm -hmm. What is my take home? Mm -hmm. And now you are, you, you are coming back and telling me to do what? To pay 2.5% mm -hmm. of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. From where now? From which basically? Mm -hmm. And it has been detected to nothing. Mm -hmm. So what Kenyan are saying, even those Mamamboga, what they are saying, I'm, I'm sure they have not read about this finance bill. But by the Holy Spirit, they know that this thing is not very good. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> by the Holy Spirit. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and something else, uh, uh, Abdi, yes. is that uh, apart from this, uh -huh. when you look at this budget, uh -huh. if you look at the education mm. sector, yes. the higher education, mm -hmm. They have deducted a lot of money from the higher education. Mm -hmm. University funding uh, board, they have deducted 5.2 billion. Mm -hmm. The commission for university education, they deducted around 40 million. Mm -hmm. The open university, which they have just launched the other day, mm -hmm. they deducted 200 million. Mm -hmm. What is it? A development budget for infrastructure, yes. they deducted around 90 million. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then, that is on the higher education. Mm -hmm. And they are talking about the, the funding model, the new funding model. Mm -hmm. And that is why recently, the universities were, were, they were advised to, to retrieve the letters, the admission letters. Mm -hmm. Where will the university get the money? Where? If it is not the school fees. Mm -hmm. Now that they are reducing. So I'm seeing mm -hmm. um, the committee is doing um, uh, uh, a less work for, for, for the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. When we come to, uh, to the lower level, uh, the secondary and the junior and, mm -hmm. the, and, the, and the primary, they have also reduced the money. Mm -hmm. And for your information, Abdi, there is no allocation for special needs students. Mm -hmm. 
the vulnerable in the society. There is no allocation. Mm -hmm. Get it from me, Abdi. Mm -hmm. There is no allocation for that. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is no allocation for Semaster, that is the Center for Mathematics, Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. And where are we heading? Where are we going to get the 21st century skills? Mm -hmm. If we are killing the math, science and, and technology. Mm -hmm. Abdi, we, we are, you, you see, the investment in human capital okay. is the gist of the economy mm -hmm. in any country in the world. Mm -hmm. And the human capital here is the education. Mm. When you reduce the budget for education, and then you are weakening the economy. Mm -hmm. okay. And when mm -hmm. the income is constant for everybody, and you are raising the, 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 the expenses, mm -hmm. and then I think uh, we are doing, if, if the, the income is increased, mm -hmm. we don't mind about the expenses. Mm -hmm. We don't mind about the taxes being increased. Mm -hmm. But imagine Abdi, your, your income is still at the same level okay. as five years ago. Mm -hmm. But taxes, every, every corner. Okay. So I think uh, we need to do a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, mm -hmm. more on that. The last one, mm -hmm. NEC, they reduced 3.9 billion. Mm -hmm. Okay. 3.9 billion yes. for NEC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you, what do you think about <laughs> it? But as given that you've asked me, I know that after submissions and counter submission, the Ministry of Education, uh, in terms of Parliament, what it has settled to give the basic education, it is 142 billion uh, that will include primary and secondary. The education, in terms of higher learning, it is 127 billion. Um, when it comes to technical and vocational training colleges, it is 30 billion. Those are the allocations that this time around in the physical year for the 2024-2025 that will be presented uh, before Parliament. Uh, that is what the Minister has accorded the various uh, institutions, especially within the Ministry of Education. Okay, I'll be coming back to you, Daktari. Uh, Omondi, we are talking about commensurate. You take the taxes, but at the end of the day, we want to see how it is used, because that was the other concern that was raised uh, within this public hearing. It should be commensurate to the amount of taxes that is being taken. Given that we have corruption and revenue leakages, um, what will be the via op viable option for the government? Should it uh, le seal these le leakages that we are witnessing, not just within the government, even within the private sector itself, these leakages, revenue leakages we are witnessing, should, it, should the focus be on that so that at least as much as we are paying these taxes, at the end of the day, if you're seeing those roads, if you're seeing those uh, institutions that are being brought up, if you're seeing the services improved, will, the, will, will that not be the goal that the current government is seeking uh, for self-sufficiency within our country? Yeah, Abdi, I think uh, stuff to do with efficiency of how we, we revenue expenditure, which we've discussed here before, mm -hmm. is a big issue here because for one, of, one of the things that we, how we spend our budget is that we know that for every 100 shillings we collect, 70% goes to pay loans. Mm -hmm. And 30% is consumed into mismanagement and corruption. Mm -hmm. So we remain with like absolutely nothing mm -hmm. to spend. Because, for example, we have a 4 trillion budget. And how much are we able to collect? Our, our, the, the prospects of whatever revenue we are going to receive is like 2.9 trillion. And 2.9 trillion, we are going to pay, we pay uh, loans goes to 1.8 trillion. Mm -hmm. And we have a budget, a very big uh, wage bill to deal with. Because of, why do we have a very big uh, wage bill? Because of duplication mm -hmm. of, uh, of, uh, of functions, for example. Mm -hmm. I told you, for example, if you go to the county government, in, in my county, if you need a title deed, Mm -hmm. then you need to go to the registrar of uh, lands at the county, who is an officer of the national government. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, in the same county, we have directors and CC lands, director lands, and we have the chief officer lands at the devolved, uh, as, a, as a devolved unit. Mm -hmm. in the, uh, we, who are paid also salaries. But they don't deal with, they don't help you to do with issue, issues to do with lands if you have issues to do with lands, because mm -hmm. it's a prerogative of the national government to deal with lands all over the country. Mm -hmm. you get me? So there's duplication of duties. Mm -hmm. And this makes our weight bill very high. And if we have, like, for example, it said almost uh, uh, 0 0.8 trillion 
goes to just the interest of the loans that we are uh, borrowing. Mm -hmm. You know very well the Kenya Kwanzaa government came into power with a policy mm -hmm. or a manifesto that they are not going to borrow anymore. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And now mm -hmm. they are not borrowing even to do development. Mm -hmm. They are borrowing to pay debts, mm. which is uh, abs uh, absurd. So if, even the, our, 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 our budget today is unrealistic because if you are only able to, we hoped that one day we get to have a very realistic budget where we are able to fund our expenditure out of on source revenue, mm -hmm. the revenues we collect, that we know that from 2.9 trillion, that is what we are able to collect. Then we can start planning. What do we put in education? What do we put where? What do we put where? Out of 9.9, 2.9 trillion. Mm -hmm. But you see, the, the, the budget deficit is too wide. That means that for us to even fund the 4 trillion budget, as much as we want to do many things, for us to even fund the 4 trillion budget, we still have to go back borrowing. And where do we borrow? Domestic borrowing has become very expensive. Mm. You know very, very well that the borrowing that we've been doing uh, from uh, is it China or wherever, mm -hmm. it, they've become so, so expensive on our budget. Okay. So we are lingering some, we need to do what we call serious austerity measures. Mm -hmm. Serious austerity measures. From the travels that uh, the president has also talked about, mm -hmm. To the leakages you're talking about, corruption that eats our 70, our almost 30 percent of our budget, mm -hmm. mismanagement, uh, things like duplication of functions. Then there is another horror thing in the budget which we call the pending bills. Mm -hmm. Imagine the pending bills of the national government are 570 billion mm -hmm. on pending bills. National government takes 2.5 billion out mm -hmm. of uh, the 4 trillion goes mm -hmm. to national government. Yes. And then the county governments take 400, 400 billion. billion yes. The 400 billion, 165 billion mm -hmm. should be going to pending bills. Mm -hmm. So that means that even the 400 billion is just able to do it. And now there is a, the, 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 <coughs> they, we keep on employing still and then the, 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 the wage bill is going up. Mm -hmm. So when we keep on doing this and we end up with a budget for, for the 400, four, 4 trillion budget that we have, mm -hmm. only 700 billion is uh, earmarked for development. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means we are not going to get any growth. Mm -hmm. The cost of living will go so high and we won't be able to fund it. Okay. So something serious must happen. A radical thing must happen. For mm -hmm. example, things like uh, as much as uh, Prof talks about the, the salaries have remained the same mm -hmm. and taxes are going up. Mm -hmm. But still, we have to have a conversation mm -hmm. on one, the wage bill, mm -hmm. salaries for example, mm -hmm. for example, parliamentarians and people of higher cadre mm -hmm. and uh, all these people who occupy this state office mm -hmm. can, can take uh, uh, salary cuts for example mm -hmm. and we reduce on whatever we're going to spend. Because if we keep on having a budget with a very big deficit. Imagine 2.9 trillion, that's what we are able to collect. Mm -hmm. And we have a budget of 4 trillion. Mm -hmm. How are you going to fund that budget? Okay. And we have all these things that are not able to be, 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 be controlled like uh, petty <coughs> bills mm -hmm. and uh, everything that is going to drain. Okay. And again, the biggest problem that we uh, will experience with this budget mm -hmm. is um, external, external forces mm -hmm. like effects of climate change. We've been <coughs> coming from floods to drought, mm -hmm. floods to drought, and it is expensive to manage a budget when all of a sudden there are floods that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. You remember yesterday the Minister for Roads and, uh, and, and Transport, Transport is yes. saying mm -hmm. that they're going to spend 42 billion mm -hmm. on the damage that is caused by... by, by, by 37.3. Uh, it was 37.3. Mm -hmm. On the damage that was caused by the floods, mm -hmm. that means that in our previous budget, probably we, nev we never planned for that. Yes. And are we planning for disaster management mm -hmm. in the 2025, 2024, 2025 budget? Yes. Because we must also put in place mm -hmm. system to deal with disaster management, which is okay. going to be very expensive. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, unless a radical <coughs> move is done, yes. we stop on some of the things, mm -hmm. and then we are going to, uh, we are go it, it's going to boomerang on us at some level. Okay, even had uh, Didi Nyoro, the budget committee chair, was speaking on that issue in terms of uh, budgeting for disasters that are unforeseen, yes. so that when it comes, there is adequate funds to, uh, yeah. to ensure that it addresses that. Given that we're entering the final leg, let me start with you, James. A minute, please, each one of you. Let me start with you, James, your final remarks, especially on the budget as you react as well. 
Abdi, Abdi, you cut my time short by a minute. Huh? <laughs> a minute, and please. you're asking me to discuss tax in a minute, but yeah. I'll try. Eh? <laughs> I'm going to do two things eh, mm-hmm. in the minute that you've given me. I want to play both the devil's advocate mm-hmm. as well as uh, criticize the government a bit. Eh? Now, the budget of uh, $4 trillion is a very expensive budget. Mm-hmm. And uh, given the debt level that we have in the country and the fact that we've been externally borrowing, uh, it is only fair that uh, uh, we pay taxes from our local uh, sources. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any one of us who has a problem with paying taxes. Uh, if you look through the regimes of the different legisla- of the different countries, mm-hmm. uh, I think in Scandinavia the taxes are exceptionally higher than what we have. Eh? Mm-hmm. The Denmark, Norway, and the and, and the and the and the and the Swedens of this country, the tax goes even up to almost 60 percent of the tax that is there. Mm-hmm. But the question is, when you collect it. What do you do with it? Because that is where now the corruption comes in. Mm-hmm. If the taxes we were collecting would work for us, then I don't think any of, any of us would have a problem even paying taxes as close to 60%. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, if my disposable income is low, but I still have to pay school fees for the children, I still have to afford medical, and I still have to do uh, my own investment, mm-hmm. then I'm literally going home with nothing. Mm-hmm. And if those taxes would work for us, then that is where it would come in. But now I want to look at uh, the, the, the other side of uh, the changes that we bring in. Uh, because in attempting to uh, 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 bridge that deficit uh, that uh, Omondi was talking about, mm-hmm. then we have to introduce certain tax measures that come with this. For one, I think we've seen uh, uh, on this finance bill the attempted introduction of taxes on distribution, on software distribution. Yes. Now that has been always a very critical area because even the courts at the High Court have made a decision with respect to uh, taxation of softwares. Mm-hmm. But now we are introducing a tax even on distributors of software, and the net effect is that what we are doing okay. is, in a way, uh, going against the international best practice. Mm-hmm. Eco Levy, for example, mm-hmm. uh, when we introduce a tax on Eco Levy, and we're saying that uh, we're introducing it because uh, we have to uh, 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 deal with the negative impact mm-hmm. of some of these products. Now, I've seen uh, on the finance bill, I think the attempted uh, introduction on eco levy is on 46 products. Mm-hmm. But all those products that we are attempting to tax, mm-hmm. there are some that are even way more harmful than the 46 that we've taxed. Okay. My colleague talked on diapers. I would not understand why we want to introduce eco levy on diapers. Mm-hmm. But even if we collect it, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you remember the, the problem we had with uh, the affordable housing levy last yes, year? Okay. When we were introducing a tax that will, and we didn't really have legislation for it. Okay. There is no legislation for the eco levy in itself. Mm-hmm. How do we ring fence uh, mm-hmm. the contribution uh, or, or, the, or the collection mm-hmm. so that it goes to the proper effect that mm-hmm. it is intended uh, to go to? So uh, there are both positives and, and negatives, mm-hmm. but the net effect is, uh, as Omondi was saying, when we collect the taxes that we are collecting, okay, James. Uh, uh, are the taxes that we are collecting yes. working for us? Mm-hmm. And, and why would we have a budget of $4 trillion okay. when the government is telling us they're falling short of collecting PYE by about $300 billion tax? Okay. Yeah. Philip, uh, kindly, I'll stick to the minute. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, efficiency in collection and austerity measures in, in executing our budget. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always argued against a bloating budget every year, while um, a service delivery perhaps is affected, not just at the national level, but even at the county level. Mm-hmm. There are pockets of things that we, we budget for that are necessarily not facilitating the economy or not facilitating service delivery. We must extract them out of that budget template. I've, I've seen in, in government budgeting, for example, where a governor's office, for instance, budgets for medals, budgets for hospitality and so forth. Mm-hmm. But those medals are never given, those awards are never given in any fiscal year. So in, in addressing those pockets, those voteheads that are stale and you know, chucking them out of our budget, we'll get to have a lean budget that we can finance. Okay, but um, to reinforce what James was talking about, mm-hmm. you know, taxing some aspects of the economy and not others, okay. um, for taxing distribution of software, and mm-hmm. that's a discussion we should have, okay. because some of the biggest and largest multinationals are distributors of software. Okay. Because it's not a traditionally uh, uh, taxed environment, mm-hmm. then the space has been so rigid that they don't pay to okay. government the distribution. 
every year while we make the finance bill, for example, okay. is to incorporate some of the new aspects that could generate government revenues. Okay. And one of them is that distribution aspect. Okay, we will and be I taxed on that now. about it next time. <laughs> now we're going to be taxed on that. <laughs> Finally, Dr. Tariq. No, <laughs> James, let, let Dr. Tariq, because the time is up, time is up. Dr. Tariq, uh, kindly conclude, Tafadali. Thank you. In just a few Abdi. seconds, please. Thank you, Abdi. If the government is accepting uh, government uh, uh, vehicle, mm -hmm. they should also accept school buses mm -hmm. and university buses. Okay. Number two, uh, going forward, I suggest that we should have civil education mm -hmm. before public participation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Omondi, 30 seconds, please. Umetetewa kidogo konyuma, 30 seconds. Uh, I mean, the thing is that uh, in, in, in my whole thing, mm -hmm. we really need to check uh, what you're going to do about mm -hmm. this uh, wage bill mm -hmm. and about uh, the four trillion budget. Okay. See how we can uh, we can uh, be able to budget it. Number the last one on tax on what the gentleman talk about. Mm -hmm. We should stop or we should not allow government to tax uh, assets. Okay. Because if, when they start taxing vehicles, the next time they will start taxing houses okay. and they will start taxing a suit. Okay. You know, assets, <laughs> but they should just tax income. Okay. <laughs> that is in theory. <laughs> we'll wait to see that. Thank you so much. That is Oscar Obondi, a political analyst, James Chuanya, a tax manager from PKF. Uh, unfortunately, James Polesana, time in uh, If we go beyond that, we'll be taxed now. Uh, <laughs> Philip Pande, youth inclusion advisor, also an economist. Thank you for coming in. And finally, the gentleman at the end is Dr. Benjamin Koske, a governance expert, as well as a lecturer from Kenyatta University. Thank you for making time, gentlemen, for this uh, vital discussion. It is an important week. We await to see what will happen at the corridors of the August House, where the Treasury Cabinet Secretary Okuri Atani will be presenting the ever highest budget we have in our country to date. That is a 4.00. No, sorry. Apologies. And Juguna Ndugu. <laughs> Apologies. I'm rushing with time. <laughs> Apologies for that. This is Professor Njuguna Ndugu who will be presenting this particular budget of 4.006. For now, good afternoon. My colleague Khalid Abdullah is already in studio for Kurunzi Mashinani. Don't go too far.